Okay, so watching the video of PC upgrade. Now that we have um, the uh, trash can getting it ready, adding a bunch of stuff. So normally I work on stuff just on the desktop with maybe a uh, anti static shield or uh, sheets. But this one, I didn't, because it's heavy, I didn't want it to fully scratch my desk and hopefully, you know, easier to rotate. So now the cover's off. Um, I can actually access a lot of the internal stuff. Um, it's actually pretty easy to open, um, as you may see with many of us. So as of right now, I'm just getting things ready, um, putting the processor and the... Uh, uh, the thermal paste right in front of me so once it's all taken care of or uh, taken apart then I can fully disassemble and get the processor changed so first step is to take the uh, torque screws out of the top there's five of them uh, many videos have shown this already um, so what you're seeing here is uh, I was really just trying to clean out the tray uh, with uh, a ton of screws that I've taken out of other devices and stuff. Um, I normally tend to keep a lot of these screws, big or small, just in case. So now that I have everything cleaned up, um, start taking the screws out on the top. So this is where the fan is. Um, you have the fan on top. Um, as you can see, <laughs> I'm kind of OCD in some fashion. Um, I had to have the uh, cover to hold the screws put vertically so that I can, you know, um, keep track of where the screws, where they're coming from. So I figured it was easier just to take the memory out. Uh, they're a total of four sticks, uh, two on each side. So um, what you don't see there is I was looking for um, a static, anti-static bag um, so that the memories is not just going to sit on the desktop. So and then there's another stick and then flipping it around. As you can see, the the laptop bag has actually worked pretty well uh, for rotating and not scratching anything. Okay, I think this model that I have um, has a little bit of a weird thing with the clip on one of the member banks. Um, it doesn't quite open as easy as the other. So anyways, continuing to Getting the screws out, uh, as you can see, I'm keeping everything on top. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't take the hard drive or the SSD out. Um, I figured it's screwed in and it's mounted in the socket. It's, it's not going to really move. Um, it is surprisingly heavy. I mean, not to the point where like I can't lift it, but it's heavier than I expected. Um, so maneuvering it on the desk. Um, you know, doing back and forth, especially um, when I had to lay it on the side and try to get the covers off. Um, that part takes a little getting used to. Didn't want to drop it or anything, so. Okay, as you can see, the top screws are out. Um, so, looking, I have my other laptop um, on the side so I can see exactly what I need to watch out for. Um, so, what I end up doing is... Um, uh, take the screws out, lift the fans. Um, there's a connector on the fan to the motherboard and a, um, I believe is a s um, antenna of some sort. Um, so that needs to be unclipped before the uh, top can uh, fully come off. And again, if you, I, I use the iFixit guide. Um, there are a ton of videos out there of people upgrading the Mac Pros. Um, so the steps are pretty much the same. So um, here I'm changing the different sizes, the screwdriver. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have um, these bits um, in the right holes on, in the kit. So I didn't really have um, um, accurate description of which what size they were. So I just had to basically check uh, each bit with the screw and make sure they fit and they're not it's not loose so here you can see that I'm laying down the cover the front cover um, and there's actually a little bracket that has two screws on it that's holding the cable the ribbon cable in place um, on the 
it's actually not the main board. Um, this is the, uh, it's actually connected to a, I believe it's a, it's the, the back port. Uh, there's a, there's a circuit board that's on the back port on the back of the machine that has all the ports on. And as you can see later, there's a, uh, 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 circuit board that's on top that is sort of um, connect. That's that's the thing that connects to like all the video cards, the actual main boards, the you know with the processors and the the I/O shields or the I/O ports. Um, so what this is is actually we see on the bottom it's laying on the bottom where the ports are and that's where the power supply is. So next step once that cover is taken off. I don't know if you can actually see it, but that fan, it's quite dusty. Not as bad as some other ones I've seen on online, but um, there's still plenty of dust in there. Um, I happen to have a canned air, so I think I cleaned it later. Uh, so now that I'm getting another um, uh, anti-static bag uh, for the memory so that I can have the main bag sitting underneath the, the main machine so it's not just, you know, swarming around on a on a laptop bag so <clears throat> okay so I think this is me trying to take the bottom cover off so there's again five screws on each side the bottom is a lot easier um, so I think I flipped it over like I said it's actually kind of heavy so I didn't want to drop it or anything yep so you can't see it but I was just taking the screws out on the top and then eventually the cover comes up as, yep. And then I had the the um, cover, the screwdriver cover um, lined up so that I can have the screws for the bottom on the bottom <laughs> of that tray and, and screws of the top on the top tray. So, um, and as it goes on, I was basically laying out like where the screws are coming from, whether it's on top or the bottom. Um, and you know they're all kind of grouped together many many of these screws are actually the same exactly the same but uh, it's just I always always done this um, when I open stuff up um, place the screws roughly where I, where, they, where they came out of um, so having a large amount of workspace is a good thing um, that these tray covers um, from the screwdriver kit um, has little squares in them, so it's actually kind of easier to keep track of what screw comes out of where, so you can use that as a <coughs> template. So, anyways, top's coming off, um, and so I'm putting the cover and the fan on the other side of the desk. I have another bench, workbench there. <coughs> so, yeah, I don't know. It's mm, cleaning it up. There was a lot of dust, so. Trying to make myself more wrong. Now here's the thing. What I just put away, you can't really see it, but what I just put away was actually a um, little hard plastic, um, like a like a cover um, that came out of a old Dell dock station um, that I took apart. Um, it has this plastic piece that's covering up um, part of the, the the back, I think. Um, so I capped it um, because it. It's kind of like a thinner credit card. So in many cases where I need to pry things up, you know, go underneath, like let's say uh, uh, another cover that has that's glued on or whatever, um, that piece actually can bend but not like fold completely. So it's just at the right um, stiffness that um, I can actually bend it enough to actually go have it go underneath some of the glues and stuff. So it's been actually a pretty useful tool. Um, what I have here is a sort of a surgical exacto knife where there's a thin plastic piece on the back and there's a like exacto knife blade on the, t on the front. Um, so um, a lot of times you can use the back of it you know to pry stuff open which I think I was using a little bit trying a little bit to get the I think what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get the uh, 
connectors off. So there are two that are connected to each side of the um, video card. So there obviously there's two video cards. So one connector per, per video card. And then there's another one that's connected on the back. Um, and then there's like a big bus connector that's in the middle of that board uh, that connects it to the main, main board where the CPU is. Um, and so the, the, these things actually seems to be quite um, stiff. Uh, they're, 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 they, they fit into their socket pretty well. Um, so I wasn't sure, I didn't want to break anything. So I, you know, try to figure out like how to pry that open. Um, so eventually I think I'll just use my hand, um, just wiggle a little bit of time and eventually that popped open. So I think that was one. Now that I'm going to flip it over, I think do the other one. Oh, actually, never mind. Um, I'm switching, um, uh, screwdriver bit to unscrew the two screws on the top. Um, later on, there's actually a, a quite a cool thing that I noticed. There's actually a lot of things that I noticed when I was looking at this. Um, it doesn't show here, uh, but inside of the video, the, the, the main board on the, on the, actually the, on the side of the main board, which is actually behind this, um, two video cards uh, where the processor goes. There's a little, like a switch, um, not a switch, like a little thing that you can press. Um, I don't know what that was, but I'm assuming that's some kind of like a reset button. Um, but uh, uh, there's a, a lot of little things that uh, I noticed that, you know, like obviously this is not a quite standard computer where, you know, not all the parts set up the same way. Traditional in a PC or a new computer, even the new Mac Pros is that there's a main motherboard as a one piece, and then you have other cards that goes into each of the slots. You know, processor obviously still goes on there, memory still goes on there, but um, this one obviously uh, was designed to fit in the, the cylindrical uh, shaped um, case where, you know, uh, obviously you can't have curvature, I guess, at, not at the time for for the video cards and the main boards. So they had it set up so that it's, you know, like a triangular heat sink and everything's going around it, so. Okay, so now that I think I had the top cleaned up, um, now that I think it's, I believe I actually had the connectors opened up on both sides now. Um, so, okay, so now that I've flipped it, flipping it over, I believe it eventually turned in and around. Um, so that I, the video can actually see, oh, I actually did upside down. Oh, apparently I had, I took the, uh, the board out already. Well, that was quick. Uh, I think when I was doing it, I felt like it took it a long time, but it actually didn't really take that long. So I think now it is trying to separate the power supply, which is on the, as the same part as the, uh, the IOs. So there are four screws that I had to take apart um, that was connected to the power supply. Uh, basically, they're just, you know, um, uh, like a metal cable, um, basically, you know, for power. And then um, there are two little screws on either side of the, the mash bracket to cover stuff up. Um, the power supply was, was dirty. There was a lot of dust that came out of that. Unfortunately, I ran out of... Um, run out of canned air. Okay, here now you can kind of actually kind of see that I had all the screws on top of, on top of this tray, the bottoms on the bottom of the tray, and there are two screws that was unscrewed for the, plaf the, the plate, and then there's um, um, brackets that was holding the, the fan cable. Everything is put in there, like roughly where it came out of, and I had them like lined up, and eventually this tray was full, almost full, so. Okay, so now that it looks like the, tr the cover's off. Um, yeah, I had a little tooth toothbrush. Um, I think it may show up later. A little toothbrush that I use for brushing dust off, um, you know, trying to get clean the fans sometimes. Um, so, can air can only clean so much. Um, but if you have um, a lot of um, pressure in the can in the uh, canned air, then you might be able to clean it a little better. But um, mine was pretty low to begin with, and didn't have a lot of pressure, so 
and end up just cleaning with a brush. So here you can see, I, I think I actually got even more organized with the, with the screwdriver bits. Um, I ended up laying them so that the biggest one is on top, middle one, middle size one's in the middle, and the, the smallest one's at the bottom, so it's easier to go back and forth. Okay, um, I think this is, uh, yeah, these are four screws that came out of the power supply cables. So that part's also a little nerve-wracking because what nobody actually shows and doesn't show in the instruction is that this power supply and like a bunch of other stuff, like at the I.O. shield and stuff, that is literally held on by the four screws that you see through them here. Um, once a four screw is remo are removed, um, that back the, the back piece, um, which again includes the I.O. and the power supply, comes out of one piece. And there is literally nothing there. Nothing else that's holding it in place. Now granted, when um, that was put back together, uh, there's uh, the cable that was uh, used to connect to the, the back plane um, that's also helping it to stay in place. Um, but... Um, if I remember correctly, there really isn't anything else that was holding it. So, so okay. So now we're getting to the meat of this. Now, um, what I needed to do is to remove two more screws from one side of the the, the main board. That's where the power cables were. Um, that was holding the the main part of the motherboard, at least the daughter boards for the CPU was connected to. Um, once that is removed, um, there are four screws on the back plate uh, for the processor. Um, so there's a total eight on there. Uh, the, the outer four were used for, as you can see here, the outer four were used for holding those plates um, onto the back of that triangular heatsink. It's actually a really cool design. There's nothing else that's holding it in place. And the, the, the board is suspended. Um, the four screws are, there's a little riser on them that um, basically keep the processor, you know, contacting the heatsink. But outside of that, that, that whole thing was, there's no other support. Um, the, these screws were pretty hard to unscrew. As you can see, I, was, I have to hold it, uh, the screwdriver pretty strongly to uh to even remove now the last one i think one of the screws um i can't i don't remember which one but i think it might have been this one um i believe it was actually the last one this one could be that one so anyways uh one of the screws so the four screws supposed to come out um and then there's there's little feet on the bottom of the heat sink that holds it in place but three came out no problem the, there was one that was in the corner um that came out with the riser with the feet um so <laughs> Uh, here I was trying to get a different screwdriver with a little bit larger handle, um, hopefully to get more torque and be able to you know open this. I believe it's actually the upper right corner one that was the one that did not come out. Um, so the screw and the feet or the riser um, they didn't come apart. Um, so here, that's these are actually pretty long screws, and I think I was trying to do this. I don't know why. Oh yeah, I did the diagonal unscrewing so. So this one came out okay. Um, so anyway, so three of them came out. Um, the other one stayed on. Um, unknowingly, that actually helped putting everything back together. Yeah, as you can see, the screw's not getting loose. It just it rotates, um, but it doesn't does not look like the screw is um, actually coming out of the the hole. So I ended up unscrewing the other one so that at least I can have, um, I was, well, anyways, back to the, the, the screw that, that was not actually coming out, I was hearing clicks. So what that means is that I knew there was the, like a riser thing that, as you can see here, the riser thing actually came out as the same piece. Um, it was hitting the, 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 the top of it where it was on un complete unscrews. So I was hearing click, 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 click. So anyways, everything came out, came out okay. Um, so 
back to the, the, the back plate, the part that didn't come out, um, as you can see in this part, only three risers were on the actual heat sink. Um, so, um, so anyways, with the back plate, didn't fully come off with the screw still on it, that actually made it easier when I reassemble it because um, I already had a screw that was holding the back plate on it and I just have to press the other one. So here I was trying to trying to figure out like how am I supposed to get this off and not like breaking any of these capacitors or you know any of this um, little, anything that was on there. Um, I think I tried, yeah, holding on to that and it keep on slipping. Yep. I wasn't able to hold it, and I was like, mm, not sure if I want to do this any further. I think I tried it one more time with another sort of plier cable cutter um, that has a flat tip on top. So the, on the bottom of this, this thing um, looks like it's flat on here, but um, underneath that ring, um, there was actually um, flat surfaces where you could, you know, um, if you had like a ranch or something, you could a small one, you could potentially hold on to it and, and do it. So here I was like, oh man, uh, it's fallen over. It was losing grip, um, losing grip. So I was, yeah, here you guys, you can see that I, had, I was using this uh, wire cutter. It does not do anything. So I tried horizontal, try to fit into the part where it was flat to hold on, to bite into that so that it doesn't move. And this is the part where like I had another uh, anti-static uh, bag that I was hoping that maybe if for any reason I was I, like accidentally touched something, at least this won't like ground or scratch anything. So yeah, it's a pain in the ass to fit it in there. I don't think I was ever ever able to fit it underneath. So I tried to use the lip to bite onto the lip and hold on to that, but that didn't work. So so anyways, this is many failed attempts. Um, it didn't work. And it was actually, again, lucky that I didn't get this off. Um, again, back to the reassembling part, it was oh, it was <laughs> getting a lot easier. It was a lot easier to put everything back in um, when when you actually already had a screw in there that was holding that plate. So that was actually two piece back plate. There's eight screws that come out of this H look H shape looking thing, and then there's another piece um, of of metal um, that is underneath that. Um, I guess trying to you know hold the motherboard flat, or at least where the processor is, trying to hold it flat. So yeah, that didn't work. So I think I eventually just gave up. Yep. Yeah, so at this point I gave up. I just started loosening up the bracket or the screws that holds the bracket in for the processor. So um, again, I, was, I think I was doing it diagonally. So I think I loosened them all up first and then take them out one at a time. I think one of them, the spring was, the spring tension was so hard that one of them almost flicked away. Uh, once I started taking them apart, I just go doing. And luckily the screw stayed on there and didn't actually get tossed, um, didn't get lost, which is good. Um, yeah, there we go. You can see that. Uh, in reality, the screws for the for this part of the plate it's exactly the same as the uh, the one that for the outer. So again, I was you know just trying to separate them. Uh, again, there's a reason that you only see three of the outer screws instead of four. So there they come. Two. I think the next one's the one that go 
that one spring it open just go yeah I think I almost lost that screw there See now here, my hand was on the spring, so that it doesn't. I was holding it, and it, so that it doesn't like just like open and shoot this the screws out. Yep, there we go. See, you learn from your mistakes. <laughs> okay, so now that this whole thing came out. It's a pretty big socket. Oh, well, <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, there you go. I was showing that's what that was. Uh, the whole thing came out. So, so now I just, you know, take the processor out, put it aside. I think I did look quite a bit of cleaning after before I put, put everything back together. I went and got some uh, bathroom tissue, toilet paper. Um, it's actually, I found that actually kind of nice, right? Other than the fact that it breaks down when there's water there. But, um, the thing with bathroom paper is, um, is that they're soft. Um, so it's very unlikely to scratch any surface. Um, so I had some rubbing alcohol as well. So I was using that, you know, dab with the paper in there and then start cleaning a lot of these surfaces. Um, so I think I cleaned the back plate from the heat sink. As you can see here, there's still a lot of uh, dried up thermal compound on there. And then, um, yeah, this, it was just all replaced. Now, the interesting thing about this is you can see that they're not evenly applied. This isn't because, you know, the, there was, you know, lack of, like, um, thermal compound, but there's a spot that the surface of this it wasn't flat. I don't know why. Um, like, I build my own, all my own computers um, in the past, and it always seems to me like the back, the contact point of the heat sink um, normally is pretty smooth surface. There's no, like, there's no holes on them. There's no, you know, nothing that, you know, that would like attract more or store more paste or, you know, the, it, the surface should, should be very, very smooth and very evenly um, uh, leveled. Um, so when it contacts the processor, there's, uh, you know, a very good even surface for the heat to dissipate. You know, um, obviously the, uh, the thermal compounds helps, but um, here I was trying to like figure out what is that little hole there? And there's actually like a something inside of us trying to clean up. Um, so anyways, I, I think it eventually I, I just gave up. Um, so when I reapplied the uh, thermal compound, um, as you can see, it was fully covered. Um, so um, anyways, I have no idea what they used. Um, a lot of these OEM um, OEM computer builders um, or factories uses um, some kind of thermal compound that eventually will just dry. Um, I've ever actually never seen um, any manufacturer that uses uh, thermal compound that stays like gelish looking. Um, so like a lot of the things that I, the thermal compounds that I use uh, don't actually dry up. Um, so it, it's not going to become like a solid like a piece. Um, I bought the, for this application, I bought the silver, Arctic Silver 5 for this. Um, the thing with Arctic Silver 5 is that it doesn't have the best con um, heat conductivity at first. Um, in theory, I think that at least this is what I read, is that um, what it does is that um, when you apply it, um, it goes through a couple of heat cycles before like all the, you know, all the, gaps and all that stuff is filled and then it sort of settles in 
then it becomes more efficient at you know getting the heat out so um, so here as you can see I was using a little brush to kind of just clean some of the dust off um, I think I probably spent too much time cleaning a lot of these things I was trying to get that tissue paper folded the other way so that they, the original thermal compound's on the inside. Think of it as a um, soft clay bar. Uh, methods is the same, or at least the uh, the way that I'm using it is pretty, pretty similar. So you fold the dirty stuff on the inside away from the surface that could become scratched, right? So I just wipe the entire thing so that there's less dust. Um, on that plate. Um, Okay, so opening up the packaging for the new processor. So instead of the, the top of the line, so I, I guess I pick sort of the most balanced processor between performance and price. Um, the 8 core or 6 or whatever the previous one is about uh, $200 some dollars, I think. Uh, just, just shy of $200. Um, and then the 10 core, which is what I have, I think it's a E5-2690 V2. So this is a 10 core, 20 thread uh, Xeon processor. Not top of the line, I think top of the line is 12 core, 24 threads. Um, the difference I think in pricing is about $100, or at least the list price that I found from most places um, were about $320, $340 for the 12 core and then the 230 240-ish 240 for the 10 core. And then I think the A core, whatever the, the, the next model down is roughly about 180, if I remember correctly, 160. So anyways, um, I originally, had or found a process that was about $220. Um, and I thought, hey, that was actually cheaper than what I saw from was it o OWC, I believe, on their website. Um, so most of the listings on Amazon were about $200 some dollars for, for the same processor and then $300 for the one level, one level up. Just before I checked out, um, and uh, there was a recommendation from Amazon saying, hey, by the way, you're looking at this processor. Here's another vendor that sells it. And lo and behold, um, it was only 140, I think, if I remember correctly, 140 bucks. So that's pretty good. So I ended up buying something, you know, much cheaper than um, what would have been cost. So anyway, so I had to clean up, um, trying to fit the processor in. Uh, one thing I noticed was that on the processor there is a dot right in one of the corners and that is what helped you to line up. I don't remember seeing same or similar indicator on the socket. So what I ended up doing is just line up the, the little slots and see which is the right way. Um, and luckily the, there are four of them. Um, Two on each side. Luckily, they're not the, they're not at the same position, so there's only one way to fit the processor. The back plate, or not the back plate, the bracket that holds the processor in place. Um, it's um, I really wish that they would have designed this a little bit better. Um, so normally on the PCs, um, the that back bracket bracket actually um, I guess it wouldn't really matter because it's the other way around. Um, Again, normally on, on the PCs, when you put a back plate, a back supporting plate, the supporting plate actually comes through the hole, right? So you see on the motherboard there are four holes, um, and so 
when the processor is in the socket, um, the ugh, yeah, this was very um, very poorly maneuvered. <laughs> um, so by the time I <laughs> let uh, put this flat, um, the processor came out of the socket, and you know the, the bracket wasn't holding it properly. So, anyways, so normally on the PC, um, the back supporting plate goes through the hole, right? So you can. The, the thing won't move around. So I think, obviously not gonna happen um, with this model because it's already discontinued. Um, so what could have happened is they could have made that bracket for holding the processor in to have little like standoffs or foot maybe that actually like go through the hole um, on the motherboard so that like the plate won't actually wiggle around like it like it does now so do you have a support plate as you can see on the table um, that has two prongs on it and then it goes through two holes so that it'll line up with the thing um, and you won't you know need to so um, anyway so, so instead of uh, making that thing fall off I end up having a you know another thing that holds everything together and slide on the table so that keeps the processor in place and then this plate goes back on <laughs> So in reality, this is actually the back of the processor. So that is the back plate, not the other one. Not the other one. Uh, but again, it still would have been nice if they had something that'll go through the hole, right? Because <clears throat> the the spring retention clip uh, doesn't have anything on it either. So the the screw has a little thicker spot on them, so that they go through the hole. Um, but uh, Again, I think the design would have been better if the screw just a normal screw and then have the other plate, the holding plate, to have like a little foot on it so that it would be able to go through the hole and the screw would just screw onto it. That way there's less movement. Okay, so the first one, I was holding that spring all the way down to allow that screw to go on. And then the, uh, the rest of the three goes on to, uh, to basically... Um, you know, secure the processor in there in, in place. Uh, so the inner four goes on first, and then the outer four goes on. Um, that was for putting this motherboard or this whatever the circuit board parts of the circuit board onto the main unit. Um, and that's what keeps the processor uh, contacting the C sync. So. So now there's just pressing the spring down to make sure that the screws are all tightened. All right, so I think I got most of them pretty tight on like within the first try. There was one screw that was very tight and that I had to kind of almost forcing it to go all the way down. But once it's done, everything was pretty flat. Yeah, see this is, I was, I wasn't sure if that was going to go in any further. Um, it, at that point, it wasn't all the way down yet. So, uh, one cool thing about these is that, again, compared to the PC installs, um, some of these screws were, sp has spring on them, and there's no, it, there's no, like, stopping location for those screws. Like, on many of the PCs, you, there's a spring in there, so you just tighten it as, as hard as you can. For the most part, you can just keep on tightening because they're never going to hit the bottom. Um, with these, <clears throat> as soon as you tighten it all the way down, you can't go any further. So, like, that is a pretty good indicator of, like, okay, you're done. Uh, versus, you know, some of the PC installs where the screws going to just keep on going. You could be over tighten it um, <clears throat> or, uh, you know, that could potentially damage the board. So this way, you go all the way down, can't turn anymore, that's pretty much done. So, yeah, let's... Trying to make this one work. And while doing all of this, um, I was trying to make sure that my fingers don't touch any of the actual component. It's mostly just touching the like the brackets, well, the, the slots for the memory, or the edge of the board. Um, when I try to install everything back onto the uh, the, the the main heatsink, um, I was do the best. I was doing the best I can to keep my fingers off of the comp the board components, but like holding the edge where the heatsink comes out. So. Um.
Okay, so now everything's there. Quick inspection. Okay, here comes the Arctic Silver 5. Um, I didn't think I was going to need that much, but uh, um, it, I ended up putting it on twice. Uh, there was an error so that wasn't like fully covered. Um, so I personally like Arctic Silver a lot. Um, they are silver based, but they don't contact electricity or anything. So even if for any reason that um, you know that overflows onto a part of the circuit board or whatever you won't have to worry about shorting it so and they also come with a spreading tool which is mm, not that useful um, it's very soft um, but eventually I was able to spread everything like corner to corner all the edges and everything was pretty good even layer um, the, the Arctic Silver this one that I got was pretty thick um, I don't, I don't think I remember it being this thick before, but it could just be the temperature. When it's cold, it is, it does become kind of thick, but, um, which is why I spent a lot of time on trying to make sure that I have a good even layer on it so that, uh, you know, one, I have enough thermal paste between the, the top of the heat, the heat, well, the heat sink and top of the processor, um, and uh, hopefully that dissipate heat. A little bit better um, so while I was while I'm applying this um, one thing I did notice after I complete the build um, the uh, temperature seems to be a little bit cooler now um, the, the, you can I could definitely feel the fan when when I had the old processor in constantly it was running like pretty warm even at idle I can put my hands over the fan and I felt like it was kind of warm um, and so now without really do anything um, the fan stock runs at about 800 rpm um, so 790 780 ish um, so with that stock rotation speed um, my current temperature on the 10 core it's idling at 43 ish at the moment um, part of it also because i'm also running other things on it um, so it's not like completely quite super cool but for air cooled um, you know with one fan for the entire system uh, system you know I don't like at 43 is not bad um, and considering I just almost tripled my performance so so that's not bad and the air coming out of the device current is it's actually quite cool so so that's good um, yeah, this took a little while because it was pretty thick. Alright, so that looks good. Now putting the uh, heatsink on. This is probably <laughs> by far the biggest heatsink. Um, you know, in any install that I've done. Again, most of the heat sink are just heat sinks, um, but this one comes with two video cards. <laughs> so, all right. Now, I had a little pause there. I was trying to figure out like, how am I going to put this on? And what is the right, rota um, yeah, what's the right rotation? So, trying to figure out like, what am I going to need to do? So what I end up doing is I end up putting one screw on top and make sure that, that fit in the hole. And so having that threaded in 
probably just a little bit so that it's, it still wiggles, but the heat sink and the processor aren't fully touching just yet. Um, that allowed me to adjust or at least align the bottom screw that was there. Remember that screw, the bottom screw, um, does not have um, any, um, it's not an actual screw. So that one is actually uh, with a standoff and everything on it. Um, so again, having that um, actually made this install quite a bit uh, uh, easier. Um, because I didn't have to force anything or push anything that's already attached so I just need to line up one hole and I already have the other hole almost lined up so I you know, had a few threads in there and then the bottom I was trying to screw in it didn't go in so I, I think I realized that the hole hasn't actually actually lined up so I backed out a little bit make sure that I got enough gives on the bottom um, I think eventually I was able to line up, up and put it in so and then of course the next falling steps will just be getting the uh, the other screws in so the rest of it just basically reverse um, of the the steps that taken it apart um, I think the next one was so the, the the four screws goes well the total four screws goes back in um, for the for the uh, outer brackets um, that again holds the processor board um, and the processor onto the heatsink and then once that's done the next step was to put um, power supply on um, and again the reverse step was to put in the two four or the two screw four screws onto the cable again the 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 power supply part of the board it was just held on by the four screws um, so that was a little tough. Um, but once that's done, again, the reverse was the bracket or the mash bracket to cover out the power supply. Um, and then the um, getting the, the, what is it called? The, this, this, um, that one circular plate that connects to the main board and then the other board, the video cards. Um, so that was the one that goes on next. Um, that has two screws on it. And um, um, then the connectors were put back on. So one interesting thing that I mentioned earlier about that is once it, once it was put it on, once it was taken off, it looks like there were two metal um, standoff that's pretty long. It looks like it's got two screws on it. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to that before. And I was like, why are there screws on top of this? Even though I think I took all the screws off. So eventually I found out that the two screws on top of the two standoff, the long standoffs, was obviously, you know, to mount the, the plate that connects to the, all the components. Um, the, the cool thing is that the screw on top of those standoffs um, were actually screws and they were adjustable. So they, you can actually adjust the height a tiny little bit. And on the top of that, so it's got like an, um, the torque wrench on it, or it uses a torque wrench, but inside of there's a hole, right? There's, it's also threaded. So that's where the two screws for the for that bracket goes. So it's a screw on top of a screw on top of a standoff. <laughs> and that's how that works, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so right here, I did a little bit more cleaning. Um, and it, anyway, so um, once that was put back on, connectors were reconnected. Um, it was the back cover that goes on and then the five screws outside of it goes on to secure it in place, flipped it over, um, and then installed the fan assembly, which had the antenna cable and then the bracket, um, and the connector. And then once that's all done, the fan's on. Anyways, I make sure that everything's cleaned. Um, and, uh, once everything got put together, um, I had it all connected and I turned back on. You know, it uh, pretty much just came out on the first try. So, so anyways, um, that was my whole process of installing the uh, or upgrading the CPU. So.